Hey boys, it's Harm None. Today I've got another business guide for you and today's business guide is on the bunker in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now at surface level, the bunker is one of the simpler businesses in GTA Online, but once you get into the business, it becomes a little bit more complex and confusing. That's where this guide comes in. In this video, I will show you the intricacies of the bunker business in GTA Online how to maximize profits while being extremely efficient, as well as some tips and tricks that most players won't know. If you enjoy this video or find it useful, a like is of course appreciated. Subscribe to the channel, going for 300K this year. Let's go ahead and get started. First off, as always, we have the location, and that is one of the most important choices you are going to make when it comes to purchasing your bunker. There are basically two locations that are actually worth buying, one of which is about 20% better than the other one. Of course, the two locations that I am talking about are the Chumash Bunker and the Farmhouse Bunker. The Chumash Bunker is a great entry level option coming in at $1,650,000 and it's located on the western side of the map along the highway. The Chumash Bunker provides an easy exit to wherever you need to go to complete a mission, however it does have some extremely tall mountains that you will have to ascend in order to reach a lot of the ends of your sale missions when you do go to sell. This can waste a lot of time and potentially even make you lose out on a sale mission, so you do need to keep this in mind. The farmhouse bunker is a little bit more expensive, however it is a much better location. It's very centrally located and also has access to two of the main roads used to get around the map most efficiently. Conveniently located much closer to most drop-off locations for bunker sale missions, as well as ammunition delivery missions. It has a lot less environmental barriers that get in the way, contrary to the Chumash Bunker, and this is going to cost you $2,375,000. I would always recommend saving the extra money and starting out with the Farmhouse Bunker. It truly is the best option. You can start out with the Chumash Bunker, but once you've had the Farmhouse Bunker, you'll never want to use any other bunker again. However, of course, you can trade in your old bunker and switch to the farmhouse bunker, but you will lose out on all of your upgrades and you will have to buy them all again. So in the long run, you're going to save more money by just starting out with the farmhouse bunker. Now, when you're purchasing your bunker, you will be offered many customization options for it, and I wouldn't recommend buying any of them except for the personal quarters. This will allow you to spawn at your bunker through the interaction menu, which is really nice. Anything else that you want to do to the bunker, I would recommend doing at a later date because we do have some upgrades that we're going to have to buy for the bunker in order to maximize the efficiency. Once you've purchased your bunker, you can head on over there and you're going to have to do the setup mission. You're simply going to go pick up a dune loader that has some supplies loaded into it and deliver it back to the bunker. This will fully fill up your supply bar and allow you to begin business operations. Now accessing the computer in the bunker, you will see the upgrades screen and this is our next target. You're going to need to do some upgrades to this business in order to make money as efficiently as possible. However, you don't have to buy all the upgrades. You just need the equipment upgrade and the staff upgrade. Now these will run you quite a bit of money. The equipment upgrade will create better quality weapons, meaning that they have a higher value per weapon, and the staff upgrade will increase the amount of staff you have, meaning that you can make weapons faster. The security upgrade isn't really necessary. I've been raided one time since the bunker update released into Grand Theft Auto Online, and I did buy it on the first day. It's relatively cheap, so you can buy it if you want to, but if you do the method that I'm gonna suggest, you'll never really have a problem when it comes to security and getting raided. Now with the bunker business, you actually have the ability to control what your staff work on. You can assign them to do exclusively research for rare upgrades, or you can assign them to manufacturing to exclusively make weapons to sell. Obviously, assigning them all to manufacturing, you're gonna make more money because you're gonna have more weapons to sell for the amount of supplies that you're buying. Or of course, you can split them to do both 50-50 so that you will get some research progress done as well as some manufacturing progress done. But if you wanna make money, assign them all to manufacturing. And if you're trying to complete research as fast as possible, assign them to researching. I don't really ever recommend actually splitting them down the middle. I don't really think it's worth it. And if you wanna make money, I'd always recommend to have all of the staff set to manufacturing until you've made a profit on the business itself. And once you're in profit, then you can start doing research if you really want to. And as far as supplying the business goes, as you should know by now, time is money. So when it comes to resupplying the bunker, always purchase supplies for $75,000. After five minutes, they'll arrive and your staff can begin manufacturing more weapons. 
Doing resupply missions is very tedious and you'll have to do multiple missions to get the supply bar to full on the bunker, so it's just really not worth doing them. However, there can be a time when it is worth doing the resupply missions yourself. And I would only ever recommend doing this if you don't have the equipment and the staff upgrades. Without them, you'll be making pennies on the dollar and completely wasting supplies, especially if you're buying them. Only ever steal supplies until you've got the equipment and staff upgraded on the business. Now, how much money can you actually make with the bunker? Well, a single $75,000 resupply after two hours and 20 minutes will make $210,000 worth of stock, meaning that you're gonna profit $135,000 off of your resupply. Now you can do a total of five full $75,000 resupplies for a grand total of $375,000. Off of that $375,000, you'll have $1,050,000 worth of stock, giving you a nice profit of $675,000. However, as far as selling goes, you can actually make a little bit more than this. Now, all but one of the sale missions for this business have a 15 minute time limit. The one sale mission that gives you a 30 minute time limit requires you to drive to five drop off locations, fighting Merryweather at each of these drop off locations. And the more resupplies you do without selling, the more sale vehicles you will get. However, if you just do a single $75,000 resupply and sell for $210,000, you will always be guaranteed to get a single vehicle sale mission. So if you're a solo player, this is how I would recommend running the business. However, if you play solo and you like a challenge, most of the time you can get away with doing two resupplies for $150,000 total and selling for $420,000. But if you get the 30 minute sale mission where you have to fight Merriweather at the five drop off locations, you will regret everything because you're gonna have to bring one insurgent to the drop off location, go back and get the other one, then fight Merriweather and then rinse and repeat that four more times, which is absolutely awful. However, if you play with a group of friends or at least one other person, you can get away with doing more resupplies and selling once your bunker is closer to full, although I wouldn't recommend doing it when it is almost full because there is a danger of getting a four dune buggy sale mission, which is pretty much impossible to complete unless you actually have four people. So I would largely recommend to run the business by supplying, then selling, then supplying, then selling. One supply one sale mission, one supply, one sale mission. If you do this, your business will never reach the raid threshold, meaning that you don't need the security upgrade to help prevent raids because raids will simply never happen. Now, of course, this is all assuming that you're doing this in a private session. However, you can do a public session sale mission if you decide the risk is worth it. Selling in a public session can make you a little bit of extra profit with this business quite easily, an additional 50%. Now, if you do the single resupply then sell method, you'll always guarantee yourself a single vehicle sale mission, and this is very worth trying. If you also register as a CEO, you can use the ability Ghost Organization to remove yourself from the map. This will cost $12,000, but it will allow you to pretty easily make an extra 50% bonus on your sale price, equating to about an extra $100,000. This is because each player in the lobby outside of your organization gives a 2.5% bonus to your total sale price, capping out at a total of 20 players, or a 50% sale bonus. Now, I would generally recommend against selling anything more than a single resupply worth of stock in a public session, just in case you get the 30 minute Merriweather sale mission. It has cost me dearly in public session sales before, and I really would just recommend trying to avoid that. Now, you will also notice within your bunker, there is a dune loader with a crate in the back marked by three blue bullets sitting on the inside of your bunker. This is a mission you can do every 48 minutes of real time or every in-game day, and it will require you to drive this dune loader to a randomized ammunition on the map, and you'll be paid $50,000 for completing this. Now, if you do get outside in the truck and your delivery is really far away, say it's in Polito Bay or it's at the far end of Los Santos, what you can do is set your spawn location to your bunker and then switch lobbies. This will allow you to spawn back in the bunker and your dune loader mission will have reset and you can just launch it again and hope that your sale mission ends at a closer ammunition or of course you can destroy the truck and head back inside of the bunker to grab a new one, hopefully delivering to a closer location once again. Now the final thing we have to talk about is research. Research is kind of an afterthought for most players, but there are some benefits to completing it. A lot of really good attachments for weapons are unlocked through bunker research, like the alternate ammo types such as explosive rounds for the heavy sniper mark II, 
armor piercing rounds, incendiary rounds. You can also get attachments for Mark II weapons that will allow them to output higher damage, which is pretty awesome. And there are also some really useful vehicle upgrades that can be unlocked, like the weaponized Tampa's aimable dual miniguns or proximity mine droppers that you can put on things like the Insurgent Pickup Custom or the Half Track. There are a total of 51 research projects and it's completely randomized as to which one will begin next. Now the worst thing about research is how long it takes, followed by the fact of needing supplies to complete said research. This obviously sucks and it does take a lot of money. However, research can be worth doing and there is a way to make it go by quicker if you have the funds to do so. Once a research project has been started, you'll have the option to fast track it for $225,000. However, the more progress a research project makes, the cheaper it becomes to fast track. And it goes down by increments of $45,000 for every 20% progress the research gets to finishing. The biggest pain in the ass with bunker research is that it's completely random as to what projects get started. So if you want the heavy barrel for one of the Mark II weapons, for example, you could be waiting a very long time and that's where fast tracking really becomes worth it. This is how I got the majority of my research done in very little time. And what I'd recommend doing if you wanna do that is set all of your staff to research so that they can begin new research projects faster after the last one completes. Then I would go AFK for short periods of time, allowing research progress to be made. And then I would fast track it once it gets cheap enough for about $45,000, maybe $90,000. Now I don't really recommend doing this as it is technically a waste of money, but if you want research done quickly, the option is there. And of course, time is money. Just make sure to check back at the bunker regularly to start the next research project as soon as possible because you will have to acknowledge that it has completed the previous research project. So there you have it guys, that has been my guide as to how to run the bunker business in Grand Theft Auto Online. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you learned something, as I said at the start, a like is of course appreciated if not dislike. Subscribe to my channel if you guys are new, going for 300k this year, and I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care. Peace.